Good afternoon guys, welcome back to Maverick Baking and to another recipe video. Today, as we did with the milk bar cake and crack pie, the Levain Bakery cookies and other kind of world famous bakery recipes, today we're going to be tackling another one. Today we're going to be making and reviewing the Café du Monde beignets. The beignet is a French style donut. It's it's been made kind of world famous by Café du Monde in New Orleans. These things typically come from Café du Monde absolutely drowned in icing sugar, fresh from the fryer with a cup of black coffee. Today, I want to show you exactly how I recreated these at home after just a little bit of online research and how you can do so yourself. Full recipe, as always, will be in the description below. Let's do it. Okay, so the first step in making these Café du Monde beignets is obviously going to be making the dough. The dough starts out in what I would describe as kind of the American method rather than the British method when it comes to the yeast itself. The British method is typically adding the yeast to the dry ingredients, keeping it kind of separate from the salt to stop them from killing each other and kind of blending it in that way. The American method puts the yeast into warm water and leaves it to sit for 15 minutes. I don't know why this is. I mean, I've read that it's to check that your yeast is active, but you would think that when it says active on the packet and it's only been in the cupboard for a few days, that it should probably be active. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna do it the American way. So this is the kind of yeast that we will be using in today's recipe. This is fast action dried yeast. Now, if you're wondering what wet yeast is, <laughs> It's essentially what goes into sourdough. It's yeast that's been cultivated just using water and flour and sometimes a little bit of a starter that kind of makes its own bacteria, its own active yeast that helps the bread rise and get lovely and fluffy and get that lovely kind of semi-sour taste to it as well. This is basically the cheats method, but it's what most people use nowadays because who has the time to look after a sourdough starter? Not me. <laughs> so what we're going to do is put this little seven gram sachet of dry yeast into this bowl of warm water. So I'm gonna give this a little bit of a stir. We're gonna leave it for about 10, 15 minutes by which point it should be kind of bubbly and gently foamy. Okay, 15 minutes have passed. Our yeast has kind of dissolved into this cloudy stuff. It's foamy with some bubbles on top. It's starting to smell like bread, which we love, but we're not making bread today, we're making beignets. To this mixture, we need to beat in some sugar, some milk and some eggs, so let's do that. As this is an American recipe, I will be working in cups while I'm making it today, but in the recipe I will publish for you guys, I will have grams measurements as well, because let's face it, cup measurements are not helpful at all. <laughs> okay, so here comes the first tiny little maverick tweak. Typically, I believe, American kitchens would use granulated sugar in baking. I know you have something called super fine sugar, and that is what our caster sugar is known as. Granulated sugar is only really used in making tea and coffee here that you would kind of stir in to sweeten it, and maybe as a kind of crunchy topping on biscuits, cookies, or cakes. We would typically never use it in actual baking though, because we have caster sugar, which is a finer version, which makes it a lot easier to get the sugar incorporated and dissolved into the recipe so that you don't have kind of molten lumps of burnt caramel throughout the whole thing. Okay, so we're adding in one third of a cup of sugar. Again, proper measurements will be in the recipe below. We're also adding in half a cup of whole milk, that's full fat milk, blue top milk, the most delicious thick creamy milk. <laughs> Whatever it's called where you live, that's the kind we're using because it has the best consistency, it has the best flavor and the best fat content for baking. We're also going to add in one beaten egg. But guess what, I'm too lazy to beat it before. So we're just cracking it in whole. So now we're just gonna whisk this up to make sure everything is nice and incorporated and then we'll get our dry ingredients in. Okay, so we have all of our wet ingredients plus the sugar and the yeast mixed together. Let's get the dry in. So the dry ingredients in this recipe that I speak of are basically just flour and salt because we've already added the sugar, we've already added the yeast. We need a lot of flour in this recipe because it's essentially just a sweetened and enriched bread dough, deep fried. Three and a half cups of flour in, we're going to use a big generous pinch of good sea salt. So now that the flour and salt is in, I'm gonna add this tiny, tiny little pan of melted butter that I have here. Don't even ask me why we have this pan. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> But this little pan of melted butter is gonna go in here. We're gonna whisk it all up and we should have a nice kind of sturdy bread dough. So let's, let's get whisking. 
So interestingly, a couple of the recipes I looked at online during my kind of research for this recipe didn't use butter. They used either oil or vegetable shortening. Now, vegetable shortening, I, it sometimes has its place in recipes, but nine times out of 10, it's just used because it's an affordable kind of saturated fat. Butter nowadays is also a relatively affordable saturated fat and my God, it tastes better and it can give recipes a lovely color too. So I prefer to use that. Okay, we're kind of past the point of whisking now, so I'm gonna to switch to a big spoon and let's get this incorporated into a big sexy dough. Okay, so we're now at the point where it looks like we're getting a fairly sturdy bread dough. I'm going to turn this out now onto a clean work surface, just lightly dusted with flour. I'm going to knead it for about 10 to 15 minutes, just until it's nice and smooth, bouncy, stretchy and elastic, which means that the gluten and the flour has started to kind of develop properly and we should get a really nice kind of texture out of it. Let's roll the sleeves up and let's get going. At this point, if you have good nails or you have very, very soft hands, forget about them. <laughs> okay, here we are. I've already got some stuff to my fingers. So we've just got everything lightly dusted with flour and we're just gonna knead it until it's nice and smooth and elastic. So you'll see that when kneading, I'm mostly using the kind of heel of my hand. You want to keep turning the dough and you want to put a good amount of kind of force into it. You want to show it who's boss, you know what I mean? You want to take out your busy Mondays, your stressful Thursdays, your boring Sundays, take out all of your stress on bread dough and I promise you the end result will be worth it. So aside from the heel of your hand, there are another couple of kind of ways you can take your anger out on bread dough. One of them being the slap in which you literally do this Just as fun as it looks. Okie dokie, so 10 minutes in, you can see that we have a nice, smooth, nice, elastic, pliable, workable dough. So it's now time to rest this. We rest it for about an hour in kind of the warmest place in your house. Nowhere hot because that might kill the yeast, but nowhere too cold because it'll make things work too slowly. You want to find somewhere that has a nice warm radiator or if you have a boiler in your cupboard, maybe you can try and squeeze it in there to leave it to rest for an hour just to let everything activate, to let the yeast and sugar do their work, feed off each other and let this bread dough bubble up to turn into some delicious beignets very soon. I'm off to go find a warm spot. So it's been an hour. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tip this out onto a floured surface again. We're gonna slice into our beignet shapes, put it on a kind of tray, and then let those little shapes rise for another sort of 40 minutes to an hour, and we'll see if they can get any more air in them. Because it's not looking promising right now. <laughs> Which is annoying, because this could be the first disastrous copycat recipe. Let's see how it goes. We're going to get one of our rolling pins here. We're gonna roll it out flat, and we're going to try and cut about 18 to 24 kind of squares out of this dough that are hopefully going to be our beignets very soon. Let's go on. Okay, so when I said 18 to 20, I definitely meant 32 plus extra. <laughs> I'm so bad at this. Okay, so um, yes, as you can see, we have an army of um, beignet dough squares sitting here right now. So I'm going to put those on a tray, put them back into my warm place and just really, really hope that they rise because otherwise we might have some fairly flat beignets. Okay guys, I'm bringing you kind of up close and personal for this part. So you can see that the beignets after about an hour have risen slightly, not quite as much as I would like, but definitely they have a little bit of height, which we like to see. Now I have my oil heating up here. We are aiming for about 185 degrees. Now this is quite a small pan just because it's easier to work with. I'm just cooking these in regular sunflower oil. Now, some of the recipes for these beignets had said that cottonseed oil was the most kind of accurate thing and the closest to the Café du Monde original, but I can't find that in Scotland, funnily enough. We don't have a lot of cotton growing here, so um, we're using sunflower oil. It's fine, so yes, the temperature is getting right up, so I'm just gonna turn this down. Obviously, if you are making these, be very, very, very careful. Super hot oil, you have no idea. This stuff will literally take your flesh off. I have been there, do not recommend. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is 
probably two at a time, I'm gonna cook these beignets for two to three minutes in this super, super hot oil until they're golden brown on both sides. Then we're just gonna kind of cool them and drain them a little bit on this wire rack, put them on this plate, cover them in this icing sugar, and then we're gonna eat them. So let's get on it. Have a couple of beignets there frying, I'm so excited. So um, another just couple of tips for deep frying. If the thing you are frying does not float to the top straight away, your oil is not hot enough. You always want to have something that can kind of prod these around if you need to. I'm just using a chopstick. Also, color is key. Because you can't stick a thermometer straight into the center of these, just use your eye. See how this edge is getting kind of nice and golden brown here? That's a sign that this does not need much longer to flip at all. Also, quick tip, always have a window open and the kitchen door shut when you're doing this because my God, hot oil stinks. <laughs> okay, time to flip. Let's just look at that. Look how much these have puffed up. That is amazing. I'm so glad because I was really scared considering these things were flat as hell. Look at that. In less than five minutes, these things have cooked into amazing looking, fluffy, super crispy, airy beignets. I'm so excited. Let me finish frying these up and then we can taste. Here we have after all of my skepticism and my hesitation when my dough didn't rise, here we have some complete beignets. Now, to make these truly Café du Monde style, one of their biggest kind of signature things is that they absolutely drown these in icing sugar or powdered sugar. So let's do it and then let's taste. Okay, here we have finally the finished copycat Café du Monde beignets. I am so excited. These are still warm from the pan. I can smell the icing sugar. It's probably causing some permanent lung damage at the moment, but that's fine. Let's get in and taste if these beignets were worth all of that effort. Now, bearing in mind the dough isn't particularly sweet, so this amount of icing sugar might not be quite as obscene as it looks. Let's try them. Homemade copycat Café du Monde beignets. I understand the hype. Let me just give you a close-up of the inside of one of these. So despite the fact we had hardly any rise on the dough itself, look at that fluffy white interior. It's gorgeous. I don't know if it'll be picking up on camera, but I want you to see it. It's fluffy. It's full of big, generous air pockets. There's that lovely, slight crispness from that golden brown edge. They're not greasy. They're not oily. They're just... Oh, like the best kind of fresh donut. Just gorgeous, crispy fluffiness with just a lovely little kiss of sweetness from the icing sugar. Mmm, that is so, so good. <laughs> wow. In any pictures I've seen, they typically serve kind of three or four of these as one serving, and I can totally understand that. They are so light. Nothing like Krispy Kreme or Dunkin' Donuts or any of these kind of super heavy, glazed, greasy donuts. These are like pillows. I could easily eat this whole plate and still be considering going back for more. <laughs> Similarly, I think if you were to make these at home, if you didn't want to do the icing sugar, if you drizzle these in honey or maple syrup, chocolate syrup, anything like that, even if you filled them, these would be absolutely insane. They are delicious. Just so simple. Just a simple enriched dough, like a classic donut, just fried to fluffy perfection. These for breakfast, these for a snack, these for dessert, big, big fan. I imagine the original Café du Monde ones will taste better than this because they weren't made maverick baking style and haphazardly on a Saturday morning. But if I can do these this well, you guys can, and I can only imagine how good the originals are. I am super, super happy with these. They're a solid five out of five. Wow. If you guys would like to recreate this recipe at home, I will leave all the full ingredients and instructions in the description below, as well as a link to my blog, where I will talk to you even more about the whole process and the flavor. If you guys enjoyed this video and you would like to see more kind of famous recipe recreations, let me know in the comments below. Tell me what you wanna see. Tell me what you'd like to know. Would you like to see something basic? Would you like to see something crazy? Let me know. In the meantime, that's all I have time for today, guys. Thank you so, so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new and I will see you for the next one. I'm off to have a snack. <laughs>